Hello and thank you for joining me. My name is Mark Gildard. I'm a 2006 alum of the Marist Athletic Training Program and currently I'm a lecturer in that same program. Today I want to talk to you about what your squat might say about you. Through this quarantine period due to COVID-19, many of us have had to kind of fashion home offices uh, in order to get our work done. For some of us, the furniture we've used might be less than ideal, just gathering together what we might find around the house. And this can have a severely detrimental effect on our health over time. Many studies have shown that uh, the detrimental effects of prolonged sitting include increased chance of low back and neck pain, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes can increase blood pressure, as well as having a detrimental effect on our cognitive function, even acutely after only just a few hours. Many of us found stress relief by going to the gym. With COVID-19, Gyms have been closed and even through phase three will remain closed for a period of time. This forced many of us to go onto Amazon and sell out of things like exercise bikes, weights. Many of us went running again for the first time in quite some time, maybe some use some exercise bands or other others of us might have used less than traditional methods to try to get back into shape. What can happen though is we might start to experience some pain either from pushing too hard, doing a little bit too much. And today I wanna to talk about ways that we can look to prevent pain through our body's biomechanics. So one of the best ways to do that is through a self-assessment. And we know that our body function changes, especially biomechanically over time. We tend to start efficiently and then as we do things a certain way, gain to tend to gain some inefficiencies in the way we move. Today we're going to use the squat to be an indicator of areas that we might want to add a little bit of improvement or emphasis on in the future. So a little bit of background here. Like I said, we tend to start as very efficient movers. And we can see this image of the toddler here who's in really perfect squat form. The feet are nice and flat, the back is straight, the knees don't come way over, way over the toes. And we see toddlers and infants use this kind of as a default position. Anytime they want to play with something or pick something up off of the floor, they'll go into this position. They don't do that kind of bend at the waist type thing that we're kind of used to at this point. In some countries other than ours, we see this kind of stay over time, right? So this position for someone who's much older than obviously our infant is still quite comfortable. It doesn't hurt their knees or their back. They maintain really, really good squat form. In a lot of instances, as we're sitting in chairs, riding in cars throughout the day, our squat form tends to deviate from this though. We may look a little bit more like this, which is less than ideal form for our squat, even with a little bit of weight on our back. So we're gonna start and we're going to use the overhead squat. Don't be too worried about seeing the barbell in this person's hand. We're not gonna use any significant weight for this, but we do like to use an overhead squat, meaning the hands are raised over the head as kind of a standard means of assessment of the entire body, right? So we're looking for certain areas of maybe a lack of stability or a lack of mobility that kind of change this squat maneuver. So as we start, we just want to be in a nice athletic position with the feet about shoulder width apart. If we're comfortable with something a little bit more uh, narrow or a little bit wider, that's okay, just not too far in either direction. Again, we also want the hands straight overhead. Typically, we, we like to assess with some kind of implement in the hands. You can use a broomstick, a golf club, hockey stick, even a towel uh, is fine in order to help us do that. If you don't have anything or, or don't want to do that, you can still do a, a nice squat assessment even without anything in your hands as long as, again, they're straight up overhead. I'd recommend using a, a phone or other recording device so that you can watch this back um, or have somebody record you as you do it. If you can't, then doing it in front of a mirror uh, should be fine to pick up on some bigger things. So in order to start, we're just going to go from this starting position and then descend down into a deep squat, kind of emphasis on the deep portion. We want to get as low down as we can in order to do this and then just rise back up into our starting position. 
So there's a few things that we want to look and feel for. So first, do we feel any pain? And if we're feeling pain in any area, our back, knees, hips, if we're feeling pain with this squat maneuver, we want to stop right there. We want to contact our healthcare provider and see what advice they can offer before we start going uh, on to the next phase of this. If we're able to do this pain-free, great. What we want to start to feel for here are very simple and overall kind of characteristics of the squat. Does it feel smooth and does it look smooth and symmetrical? Are both sides doing the same thing? Are there any hitches in the motion as you go through this? And just get that nice overall view. Then we can start to observe specific regions of the body and what they're doing, including the foot and ankle, the knees and hips, and then the spine and shoulders and arms as part of the upper extremity. So a few common mistakes that we might see or a few areas of inefficiency that are very common when we perform this. First, as we look at the foot and ankle, do the feet turn in or out, right? So even if we start with the feet a little bit turned out or straight forward, that's okay. But does that position change during the squat motion? Do our toes kind of move in or out? And that's no good. A really common one is people can't uh, complete the maneuver without the heels coming up off of the floor. So we want to try to keep the feet nice and flat as we make our way up and down through the squat. But a lot of times we see this heels up position like on the left uh, image on the left here. At the knees, we want to look for efficiency in terms of the knees staying in position. So on the bottom right image, we can see uh, on the left side of that image, the knees stay right over the foot. On the right side of that image, we see this more knock kneed position, what we term a, a genuvalgus position. And so we see those knees kind of migrate in towards one another. And that's a really important sign of some inefficiency going on. At the hips and the torso, there's a couple things that we tend to do uh, as compensation. So one of the really common ones is we tend to lean the torso forward in order to try to get deep. Right, so instead of dropping the glutes down, we tend to bring the chest towards the floor and the arms fall down with it. And again, that's trying a little bit to cheat to get down into a deep squat position that we want to avoid. We want to try to keep that back nice and straight and the arms overhead. One other thing that's pretty common is we tend to favor one side to another. So we have a little bit of asymmetry through the squat. So we might feel or see a weight shift to one side or another as we go through this squat maneuver. So once you've completed maybe one or two of these, I want you to try a squat with a couple variations and try them one at a time. So first, start by putting your hands on your hips and then doing uh, the squat maneuver. If you feel like your squat becomes a lot easier and feels more efficient and even looks better, well then that's gonna tell us that maybe some of the issues are coming from the upper portion of our body, maybe from the shoulders, maybe from uh, the thoracic spine, and that's an area that we can discuss. The other um, compensation or the other variation that we wanna try is to bolster uh, the heels and elevate them with something. So on the image on the right, we can see a nice bolster under, under the heels here. You can use a book, a weight plate, anything you have, just to bring the heels up a couple of inches. And then again, repeat your squat maneuver. If this makes it much easier, again, that's gonna tell us maybe there's an issue in the lower extremity uh, as opposed to the upper uh, as we did the hands on hips type squat. So those are two really easy variations to help give us an indicator maybe of what exactly uh, or where exactly our issue might lie. So how do we use this self-assessment? So let's take just those two examples that we discussed, the hands on hips and the foot bolstered kind of position. So if you do that hands on hip squat and you really feel your squat improve, then maybe again something in the upper body is what's causing some inefficiency. And a lot of times that can come from the chest and shoulders or the thoracic spine, kind of that middle portion of our spinal column. So you can do some nice easy chest stretches or pec stretches like we see on the left side here. So a nice wall stretch. I really like on the bottom left this doorway stretch that really opens up the chest uh, and 
peck majors for us or even on the top right if you have a foam roll or other bolster you can let the arms kind of fall out and that opens up the chest a little bit on the bottom right we see a nice very simple quadruped position here and it's a nice way to maybe increase or at least warm up that thoracic spine a little bit just by doing a little bit of a twist maneuver um, and opening up the spine and even the rest of the anterior portion of the torso as well. On the other hand, if our squat improves significantly with something under our heels, right, that might indicate that, again, it's coming from an issue with the lower body. So that might indicate that you need to focus on maybe some stretching or mobility of that lower extremity. So some nice calf stretches like we see at the top here, some uh, hip and thigh stretches such as a quad stretch like on the bottom left and a hamstring stretch like we see on the bottom right. Again, those are just a few things that might be causing it. There are many other things that could contribute, but these are some simple ways to try and improve that. Now, as you're moving forward with this, the key is to keep moving forward, right? So you made a lot of progress in terms of going back out on your runs, getting on the bike, using your treadmill that's in the house and is no longer uh, just a clothesline for you. So keep moving. Again, we talked about the detrimental effects when it comes to prolonged sitting. So make sure that we're maintaining that nice pace uh, of movement that we've kind of set for ourselves in quarantine here. Also, make sure to reassess and note any progress. So do this squat maneuver maybe once every couple of weeks. And if we're doing some strengthening exercises or some stretching and we're feeling changes or we're seeing changes, then that's a good indicator that we've got good progress and we want to keep moving forward with that. As always, your best resource is your healthcare provider. So they're going to have a much more detailed, more in-depth amount of knowledge about what your squat might mean and why or where those inefficiencies are coming into play. So if you have questions, contact your, again, physician, your physical therapist. If you have access to an athletic trainer, you can use them. We always want to make sure um, that we get advice from our best resources. Finally, I'd like to thank the Marist Alumni Office for giving me this opportunity. Um, and if you have any questions for me or would like to reach out, my email is listed here. Thanks again, and go Red Foxes.